In this video, we are having a look at mappings and struct in Solidity. Now let's start with the mappings. Mappings are having a key and a value. It looks a little bit like a hash table. The value can be any type except of a mapping. And the key can be anything except of a mapping, a dynamically sized array, a contract, an enum, or another struct. Now this is from the Solidity docs. And now let's have a look at some examples to better visualize how this looks like. A mapping in Solidity, if written in Solidity, it looks like this. The mapping keyword, then we have a key type and a value type, and then the name of the mapping. Those are all valid examples of mappings. Mapping an unsigned integer to a boolean with the name sum mapping, mapping of the unsigned integer to an unsigned integer with another mapping, mapping of an address to a boolean with the name mapping number three, and mapping of a string to an unsigned integer, mapping number four. This is exactly the way how you would write it in Solidity. Now, what can you do with a mapping? All possible variables are initialized by default. That means in a mapping where you map unsigned integers to booleans, every possible unsigned integer in a mapping would be already initialized with the default values of a boolean. That means the default value of a boolean is false. If it would be the value type and unsigned integer, then it would be zero. Every possible address would be zero x zero. Mappings do not have a length. And the reason is that they are already initialized by default. So they cannot really have a length. What you do instead, and I show you this in a second, is to have a counter that tells you the length of the mapping where the last value is stored. It's also impossible to retrieve a list of values or keys like you would usually do it, for example, in Java. Again, the reason is that all variables are already initialized by default. So it's internally not possible. But you can find a workaround for that. Now let's have a look at some typical usages. The typical usages for mappings are an address to a value type or an unsigned integer to a value type. There are other usages, but those are, from what I've seen, the most used keys. Address to a value and unsigned integer to a value. For example, address to a boolean, where you would store if this address is allowed to send. So you would say is allowed to send and then the address and then either true or false. Or a mapping with an unsigned integer to some struct. And we are going to talk about structs in a second. But here you would say a mapping with an unsigned integer to the struct with the name can do something, for example. And here you would have a counter that is the key to this can do something mapping. And it starts with a zero. And then you would add to the can do something mapping here. And because everything is initialized, you don't have to have any new keywords or you have to initialize anything. It's done by default. So when this key is initially zero, you can go to the zero element, the first element of the can do something mapping and just say is some struct with the struct arguments. And then you simply increase the can do something key. So at the end, the can do something key is the length of the can do something mapping. Let's have a look at structs. A struct in general is a way to define new types in Solidity. The struct starts with the keyword struct, 
and then with the struct name. Then you have the curly braces and inside the curly braces you have the data types and the variable name and then a semicolon. For example, a struct with the name my struct and then I have three variables inside, one unsigned integer, some var, a boolean, some other, and an address, some address. I can have a new variable with the data type my struct. And then I could have a function set my struct and my function has three arguments an unsigned integer, a boolean, and an address. And I could set my variable with the new struct that I just created above here. And this is how I set structs. I have the struct name, and as arguments from the struct, I have the right data types, unsigned integer, boolean, and address. And I use the ones from my function here. My first function argument is an unsigned integer, then there's a boolean, and then there's an address. Another version of how to use the structs is the following, with a mapping. And here you could save any additional information for an address, for example, where the key value of the mapping is the address, and the value type is the struct. And then I could set my struct again with some function arguments that I give it here. But as a key, I use the message sender address. And the message sender address is a global variable if you don't know by now. So this one will contain the address of the person who initialized the transaction. Let's have a look at another example between mappings and structs. Again, I have the struct my struct. And now I have a mapping can do something and the can do something key. And this is how I would use the can do something key so I know the length of my can do something mapping in combination with a struct. I have a function add can do something and I have three function arguments an unsigned integer a boolean and an address and I use those to fill in my struct values. And I save this struct with these function arguments that I call this function as the first key in my can do something mapping and then I increase this can do something key. So the second time I call the add can do something, it will be the second element in the can do something mapping and so on. So I could have another function called can do something length and it would return me the can do something key, for example. This is the way how you can access mappings, how you can write structs, how you can define structs and you, how you can return the mapping length. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or any feedback, you're highly welcome.